that small guilt that haunts you, part four. Chill out and dive into the story if you enjoy our vibe. Don't forget to subscribe and share Thread Tonic with your friends. Account 1. My family bought a new dog when I was in kindergarten. It was a beagle, and I loved her. We had a fenced-in backyard, so my brother and I played with her often, running around and such. When we moved to a new house in fourth grade without a fenced yard, we started chaining her outside just to go to the bathroom. As I got older into my teens, I played with her less and less, and no one took her out for walks anymore. She gained a lot of weight, developed hip problems, and eventually got sick. We had to put her down when I was in 11th grade. I'll always regret not taking her out for walks more often and giving her more attention as I got older. Account two. Wouldn't call this a small guilt, but when I was 12 or 13, my best friend told me that a family friend in his 30s, 40s, had kissed, fondled her. At the time, I was actually jealous because I thought this guy was awesome. He loved hanging around us kids and seemed fun, classic predator grooming his victims. I couldn't figure out why she never wanted me around him. I was a sheltered and naive kid who knew nothing about sex, so I never told anyone because I didn't think there was anything wrong with some kissing. Years later, we stopped being best friends in high school but occasionally talked. This whole awful story came out. She didn't want me around him because she was trying to protect me. Not only was she molested by this family friend, and her dad sided with the molester until their church uncovered other molestations leading back to him, but her dad also used to beat her up. They were Jehovah's Witnesses, and he would beat her for hanging out with me. She missed a lot of school, but I always thought it was because she was sick. She told me about one time when her dad was beating her, and she tried to run to my house. I lived a road away, but he caught her halfway. In my mind, I can still picture it, and it makes me sick to my stomach. If she had made it to my house, my parents would have protected her without question. Or if I hadn't been such a self-absorbed and oblivious little girl, I might have noticed or understood what was happening and would have told someone. I can't describe the level of regret I have over this even after 25 years. Sometimes I see her around town and she looks rough and worn down with too many kids and not enough money, while my life has been relatively easy and successful. She had so much potential when we were kids, and I still wonder, what if I had said something, done something different? Account 3. I don't feel bad about it anymore. But once when I was about 8 or 10 years old, I was in a clothing store trying on a jacket or shirt. There was a really cool paper character attached to the price tag that I found amazing. I didn't even like the shirt, but for some reason I took the paper thing. I felt like the worst thief in the world. And when I did my Holy Communion, I was 10 or 12, I confessed it to the priest and had to pray a little. I felt so much relief after that. Account 4. A girl I really liked in high school gave me her number so I could call her if I ever felt alone during an existential crisis. The only time I dialed her number was on her birthday. I planned to tell her that I loved her and that even if she didn't love me back, just knowing that someone as wonderful as her existed gave me hope that things wouldn't be so bad. Instead, I closed the phone and decided to write her a postcard instead. She swallowed a bottle of pills and died the next day. Account 5. I was a slacker in high school. I scored near perfect on all my tests, but wasn't motivated at all. I felt like I was too smart to be bothered with school. Anyway, I won something called the National Merit Scholarship, which signifies that I was in the top 0.1% of SAT scores or something like that. I hate awards, and my mom was so proud, but I shrugged it off. There was an awards night at school where people got cum laude ribbons and such. I was essentially failing and bitter about it, and I didn't want to be around all those motivated kids. I told my mom they wouldn't mention me, that I wasn't important enough, so we didn't go. It turns out they had a special ceremony for me, and I wasn't there. The NMS is a big deal, apparently, but there was just an empty stage. When I told my mom, she broke down crying. I hugged her, and she sobbed into my shoulder, saying, I just want a chance to be proud of you. That's when I realized how much my too-cool-for-school attitude was hurting her. She wanted a son she could go to ceremonies for, see happy about his college acceptance letter, and play sports. Instead, she got a kid who acted like an adult by the time he was 10, stayed in, and read philosophy instead of playing sports. 
and didn't care about the little things that make a mother happy. I never needed her, and I realized then how cruel that was. It was the first time I ever made my mom cry, and I felt terrible. Account 6. I'm currently away from home at college, but the last time I was home for Thanksgiving break, I was playing with one of my dogs in the living room, playing fetch with her favorite toy. Eventually, I got a little bored and went to my room. She followed me to my room with her toy in her mouth, but I just shut the door so she couldn't get in. Later that evening, about five hours later, my mother knocked on my door and asked if I knew that my dog was lying down in front of my door with her toy, waiting. I had made her wait for five hours just to play, and I had opted to play video games instead. I played with her for a few hours after that, but I still feel terrible about it, even to this day while I'm at school and really miss my dogs. Account 7. When my son was about three months old, he was napping in a little vibrating bouncy seat. I was cleaning and talking to my mother on the phone when he woke up crying. I started making a bottle, and as I was shaking it, I realized I had left the sliding glass door to the balcony open. I was holding the phone between my ear and shoulder, had paper towels under one arm with cleaner in that hand, and was shaking the bottle with my other hand. I lost my grip on the phone right as I was walking behind his seat. It smacked him right on the cheek. I was horrified. There was no bruise or any other mark on his face, and he barely even cried, but damn it if I didn't cry every time I thought about it for what might have been a month after that. TLDR. If I owned a Nokia, my son wouldn't be here today. Account 8. A couple of months ago, I totally forgot to tip the pizza guy. He was really upbeat and nice, but the moment I gave him exact change, he just kind of deflated. I thought about how maybe he really needed tips. I felt bad about it for a while. Account 9. Guilt. I'd be the happiest person if there were a way to burn out all the guilt. Here's the latest leech clinging to my conscience. Four days ago, I made out with a buddy of mine's ex-girlfriend, who he had a very long history with. Not going to get into details, but lots of stuff went down. Anyway, he specifically told me that he would never see me the same way again if I hooked up with this girl. I told him I was his friend and I would never do something like that. Then I got drunk one night and ran into her, and you guessed it. I haven't seen the kid yet and don't plan on running into him because he doesn't go out much, but he knows by now, I'm sure. The thing is, he is the most awesome dude you'll ever meet, and I'm a terrible friend. I can't even look at him now. Time to hide my face from the world again. Blinds closed, phone off, Reddit. Account 10. I used to be a very happy lad. In high school, I was very social, friendly, polite, and known as a happy social butterfly. Then college happened. I am constantly miserable at college. I come from a poor family and a very small village. And now I go to a very expensive private liberal arts college on a full-ride scholarship. I hate everyone at the college I go to, and I cannot stop being miserable and sad. Students here just do not have manners or general morality, and I cannot find ways to socialize with them because I do not do drugs or enjoy spending large amounts of money on material possessions. Because of this, I am almost always alone or around people I can barely tolerate. As a result, I am always angry or miserable. I take out my anger and sadness on those around me. I have said terrible, vile things to people and completely destroyed others just because I could. I used to be so happy, I just do not know what happened. Account 11. When I was getting divorced, I gave my ex everything. I didn't care. I just knew I couldn't be with her forever. The thought of that made me sick to my stomach. The only thing I kept was our dog. Times got tough and I wasn't able to keep her. I took her to a shelter, but I was young and stupid. I was oblivious to the thought of no-kill shelters and such. I don't even remember the name of the shelter, just that it was in Aberdeen, MD. It was five years ago. And I still hope sometimes that she's living happily somewhere. I feel like a horrible person. And oftentimes, I miss her. Count 12. I was in a relationship with the love of my life. I have BPD and went total OAG on him hardcore controlling, didn't let him see his friends because I didn't like them, etc. Fast forward, he managed to break it off, but I did a lot of damage to him emotionally in that amount of time. I really wish I'd never gotten into a relationship with him, or at least waited until I had my personal issues under control first. Account 13. Five years ago today, my grandma was in our living room dying. They said she had maybe five more months to live. 
It was 9.30 in the morning, and my mom came in and told me the hospice nurse said she would likely go today, and I should go downstairs and spend time with her. I took too long getting out of bed, and in the ten minutes it took for me to get up, she died. I've never forgiven myself. On top of that, she always wanted to watch Ratatouille, but I never made time for it. I can't watch that movie now. Count 14. For everyone who feels guilty about not being there for a dying relative, you had no idea they were going to die. No person knows when someone else is going to die unless it's medically obvious. Don't let this haunt you. Instead, live for them. Keep them in your hearts and memories honor who they were. And know that they didn't die with bitterness in their hearts because even if you weren't there then, you were there before. Account 15. Having a much higher sex drive than my ex, I wanted sex a lot more. One day she didn't want it, but I did. She said after some time that she would let me. So I started, and she started crying. I raped my ex, and I hate myself for it. I wish I could go back and change my mindset. I wish I could have changed. Count 16. When I was in year six at school, a new kid came, and I gave him a hard time because he was weird and stuff. There's not really a nice way to say that I was a total jerk. I eventually stopped and was always okay to him after that, but he was mercilessly bullied by loads of other people in my year until the end of school. I'll always regret that I never took any action to stop other people. Account 17. On the flip side, I was super nice to the new kid. I told him when other kids put stuff in his coat pockets, let him pretend my Game Boy was his, my family was broke, invited him for dinner, etc. I convinced all the other kids he was actually cool. That kid spent the whole of high school bad-mouthing me. On the upside, I shoved him down the stairs and called him a jerk before we graduated. Account 18. I have a friend who is very dear to me. Still is, even though the friendship has probably gone to the dumps. He trusted very, very few people, and I was one of them. My guilt is that I couldn't be the friend he needed me to be when he was at a low point in his life. He suffered a deep loss, the love of his life. I tried, but I'm awkward and unskilled when it comes to being comforting. I gave him space after a disagreement because my low self-esteem made me think that he hated me now. But in hindsight, perhaps he felt that I've abandoned him. I live with this regret all the time, how incapable I am as a friend.